here we are on day two, second coat. Uh, things look pretty good. There must be a little bit of dust kind of flying around in my shop when I came down there was sort of a thin layer of sawdust on everything. Uh, that's probably just because it's in the air, but you can just wipe that off, just wipe it off with my hand. And actually, even when you're doing the first coat, as soon as you wipe off, you can basically touch, touch the wood. Make it like a little bit of a film on your fingers, but it's not gonna actually harm the finish at all. And another benefit, you know, the uh, wiping on and wiping off. So, that one's good. I'm gonna put on a second coat. I'm uh, gonna mix up another batch. I forgot to put the lid on the old batch last night. So that sort of gelled and solidified, and it kind of ruined that container, so I got another one. This one's pretty small, because I'm not gonna need much now. Uh, I'm just gonna do three coats total, and the next two just sit on the top. They don't really soak into the wood, so you don't need nearly as much. So last time we did like a half cup, half cup, half cup. I'll probably just do a third cup of each and that'll cover the next two coats. So let me get my stuff together and I'll mix that up. Let's make this, mix this up here. Um, any rags you used yesterday that touched some of the finish, either you know the first application rag or the second rags where you went and wiped it off. And that third rag, the, the kind of the final wipe, you just toss all those because as soon as they get any finish on them, um, once they dry out, they get pretty gross. Like it all hard and stiff and you do not want to run that back over your finish again. So I'm doing about a third of the cup this time. And really it'd be best if you get in here with a paper towel and wipe this room out, but just for Expediency, I'm gonna skip that step here. You notice it's a lot thicker now, of course, it doesn't have the uh, lacquer thinner in it. That looks pretty good. All right, let me get a rag and then we'll put that on. Okay, and again, we just got our cotton rag here, just gonna fold it over a few times, give ourselves a nice little pad. And just to speed things up, I'm just gonna pour some of this on, because I know I'm gonna need a bunch. Maybe like that, maybe. And it'll bring back that really nice wet look again. And like I said, I'm not too worried about the backside on this one, so I'm not gonna go out of my way to make it super wet. I'm just gonna get a quick coat here, running a little thinner probably in the back. Um, I'm putting three coats on this one. This, like I said, this is for a, I'm just kind of wrapping a speaker, just the sides and the top. And it's not going to get a lot of hands or usage. There's not going to be anything put on top of it. So I'm not too worried about super protecting it. Um, for most furniture, you probably want to do four, five, six coats. It's really just limited by how much time you want to spend doing it. Uh, as far as the appearance of the finish, I did a test once where I took a board and split it into fifths, I think, and I added a coat. One coat on the first fifth, two coats on the second, three coats on the third, all up to five. And after like the second or third coat, I didn't really notice any like, color difference. Um, so in theory, it should just be more sort of water protection the more coats you put on, but it won't make too much appearance difference after that.
thing to note about this finish, <clears throat> it'll make end grain, so I have end grain down here. It'll make the end grain extremely dark. So if for some reason you're working on a piece where you're gonna see a lot of end grain, it may be distractingly darker than the rest of the, the rest of the wood. I don't know if you can see that, it gets pretty dark. Um, and that includes any, so like I have a mitered edge on this corner uh, where these three pieces meet. And sometimes you'll see this very thin edge will be sort of a darker line because that's technically end grain there. So if you think that would be distracting, um, something to consider with this finish. Okay, and then I'm just checking in that uh, radiant light from outside, and I think I got pretty good coverage here. So now I don't have to really worry about the soaking in, so I'm just gonna leave this for an hour, and then we'll come back and wipe it off. Okay, hour's up, so I'm ready to wipe this down. Um, I, here's the leftover finish. I don't have a lid for it, but I have this block of wood. So that'll keep it fine for <laughs> 24 hours until I can put the last coat on tomorrow. So I'm just gonna leave that like that. And then I got myself a nice big rag here. Start wiping these down. switch to a couple of other clean rags here. And I usually take my gloves off for this just because I can get a better feel. Maybe it's just uh, on my head, but when I do the final wipe, I just like to I mentioned this earlier, I mean, once you wipe it off, I mean, it's completely, you can just touch it right away. You don't have to worry about messing up the finish or getting a bunch of junk on your hands. So uh, I'll do one more coat, and I probably won't do that on video. It's going to look just like today, so just play today's video again. <laughs> and then uh, in the last video, we'll get to the finishing steps. We're going to buff it with some steel wool, and then I'll actually assemble it. And then the final step will be putting on a coat of uh, feed and wax, this nice orange oil waxy coat. It'll just really finish it off nice.